हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू अवर प्रोग्राम ऑन इमिग्रेशन एंड यू आई एम योर इमिग्रेशन अटर्नी माइकल फुलवानी एंड वंस अगेन वी हैव विद अस माय लॉ पार्टनर डेविड नाकमन डेविड वेलकम थैंक्स सो मच माइकल सो समर इज गेटिंग ओवर नाउ एंड लेट अस टॉक अबाउट सम नाइस हॉट इश्यूज एंड प्रॉब्लम्स दैट पीपल फेस हियर इज समथिंग दैट आई वांट टू टॉक अबाउट टुडे इन दिस प्रोग्राम ऑन नवंबर 20th 2014 president obama issued a memorandum immigration enforcement policies so here it goes basically in the practical way i can read the memorandum and all that but i want to tell you in a plain language as may be understandable by most laymen so let us say uh, a person is apprehended or arrested by ice because he is illegal in the us nothing no other crime or serious he is arrested because he is illegal so what can the lawyer do the client comes to me clients come to you he says my son has been arrested he is not done anything he is in the ice in the detention in the custody we go as lawyers to the ice people and tell him listen here is a prioritized memo under which you should not be arresting people unless there are serious criminals and terrorists or people who have previously been deported he will see the memo he will agree with us most likely and that may help in releasing because i know that they are following the policy but we still lot of things happen they just put it in you know so that's why people still come and we wonder why they did it but we are we have something to do in this case again the ice people arrested him not only arrested him but they put him in the deportation proceeding case is going on and we find out there's nothing here that really requires that kind of arrest because there's nothing falling within the priorities memorandum that you'll be talking about later so there's a relief you can obtain even there a person is in detention all right let us say the case goes before the judge and you can argue before the judge judge this is a case where which is not really covered by prioritizing memo and to release him right administratively close him temporarily release him whatever relief that can be appropriate and most i would say most government lawyers will also agree on that and that because that's the policy of the government they are following it and if they are not followed they should follow now so basically of course there are case by case based decisions it's not the law that priority memo that you will tell we say you have to because look president obama said not necessarily because there may be a case by case there may be some issues there maybe some domestic violence there maybe criminal case there maybe something else that uh, doesn't fit in really strictly in that memorandum so that's the, the the message we are giving to our people that don't worry this the government is not after you they don't have a time to come after people who are simply living illegally in this country they are now focusing on only those people that are in that memorandum that david is going to explain to you so people say i'm here for 10 years now i'm tired i want to go back now to india uh, because nothing is happening we say listen i am not congress to pass the cir what you are doing now you are leaving now but be prepared to stay there for the rest of your life if you are here living there things are happening look at the memos 1 2 3 dhaka dapa uh, provisional waiver slowly slowly the priorities were you know memorandum the relief is coming in and hopefully some day even cir gate may pass that's my advice but people some people say my father died i couldn't go my mother died i couldn't go my sister got married i couldn't go i don't make personal decisions of a personal life i only we only give them our advice or the law what the regulations are exactly. what can happen here by staying what can happen by going abroad with this i'm letting you go over what is that priorities memorandum well, Well Michael before we get to the uh, priorities memorandum which uh, actually was uh, promulgated back in November um so that was uh, promulgated at the same time that all of these other deferred action programs uh that uh, the president had uh, or or what they called the administrative relief right. programs that the president had promulgated uh this summer many of you may be aware because you heard it uh, heard about it in the media about this new bill which was proposed in congress called the stop sanctuary cities act so uh stop sanctuary cities means that there are a certain number of cities in the united states where there's an issue between federal law enforcement and state law enforcement where uh federal law enforcement they want people to they want the states to be helping them to enforce the immigration law 
and the uh, states, of course, uh, they feel that they should do things the way they want to do it. And so the federal government has been making uh, huge attempts to get local, uh, to get uh, uh, cities to be able to help them to enforce the uh, federal immigration. Now, uh, there are some cities where they've had to, uh, for example, uh, San Francisco, Philadelphia, there are some cities that are deemed to be sanctuary cities. And it was kind of interesting because I was looking up what is a sanctuary city, and I just took a look online at, in Wikipedia to see whether there is any legal definition of sanctuary cities, and there really isn't. Uh, sanctuary cities is something that has just become a name that people have given to certain cities where the uh, local law enforcement has decided that it's more valuable for them to coordinate their efforts with people in the community uh, because they're getting good information about rooting out um, the evildoers in a city and to cooperate with individuals who are um, foreign nationals who may be in status or may be out of status, but what they're doing is they're basically taking a we're not going to do anything approach and um, and even though the federal government is trying to push those cities to join them in enforcing immigration. Now, for those of you who might remember going back to 1996, there was a, a program called 287, uh, 287G program. In that 287G program, a big push was put on to make the cities um, uh, enforce the federal immigration and laws. Are, and and so, cities signed the agreement. And a lot of cities signed it, but what ended up happening is that a lot of cities were very unhappy yes. that they ended up signing it. And so what ended up happening was that detainers were required. And, um, you know, so uh, this, this was one, this was a very bad result of the 287, uh, the 287 G program. Uh, what a lot of the individuals today are saying is that really this PEP program, this um, uh, the Priority Enforcement Program, which the uh, president promulgated in November, is a reincarnation of the 287G program. And that, of course, remains to be seen. But Jay Johnson is doing a tremendous job of making calls to the appropriate people in the cities to try to get everyone on board with this Priority Enforcement Program. So, as Michael uh, pointed out before, what is the Priority Enforcement Program? So what the Priority Enforcement Program essentially is is a memorandum which lists out what the priorities are for the federal government to try to enforce by way of removal against foreign nationals. So who are the people who we want to have removed? Well, terrorists are at the very top of the list. So anyone who's involved in terroristic activities or priority in the one. past. So that's number one, priority number one. Uh, Individuals who are involved in serious crimes, those individuals also very high on the list. Then and then moving, number two, priority, priority number, number two, two. Yes. Uh, and, then, and, and so on. So basically what it is is that there's a list, and, and um, Michael, you uh, did a pretty good job criminals, of telling me. Criminals, criminals serious, serious crimes. Serious. Non-serious non crimes, no, serious no, crimes, no, then non-serious no, crimes, no, yeah. and, and so on. And so what, what you end up... Basically it's like that that I said. The Obama administration says that if you club everything together, then you are not concentrating on the people that we wanted. We want you to focus first on terrorists. Focus, number two, on the people that have committed serious crimes. Focus on people who have a prior deportation order, but they have still not left. Now, if you finish that, that doesn't say in that memo, but basically message is that. First, do that job. If you complete right. all that work, then you go to the people who are simply staying illegally. Because right. remember, President Obama cannot say, do not deport these people. Correct. The law says, the law says you can deport an illegal alien. Right. But he can say, don't give it a priority. That he says, yeah, he can say, you, we, I'm not changing the law. You follow the law. Right. Because and But we, as a government, administration, has a right to prioritize. What we want, the first priority. What we want, the second one. What we want, the third one. And you finish all that because this way you will be able to m deport more criminals, more terrorists. Well, you'll have the resources available resources to be able to do it. Focusing on them first. Exactly. Keep this on the side. Make two blocks, separate lots. Lot number one, take care of that. Once you finish that, you go to the lot number two, which will never happen. Right. They will never be able to, in my opinion, they do not have the sole resources, money, and the staffing to take care of those three categories. Exactly. So, so there is no emergency, no nothing to worry about. 
basically they are not coming after people who have not been in these three categories that we say that. Right. And so what you're seeing essentially is this November memorandum is being used both as a sword by the government and as a shield. So it's used as a sword by the government to go after the terrorists, to go after the criminals, and to go after the individuals who are involved in serious crime. And it's being used by immigration lawyers such as ourselves as a shield because when individuals who are picked up illegally. possibly in Not the way... we use that legally. Right, exactly. In other words, that right. what Michael's saying is that essentially when an individual is, let's say, brought in where they are just that of status and brought in, let's say, as part of being in the wake of some kind of a more important operation or sting, then what we can do is we can marshal this memorandum and we can say, look, this individual is not a priority. Please let this individual go. Let my people go. And so um, one of the things that we're able to do is to bring this memorandum to the attention of officers uh, at, at just about every level, including immigration law judges, and to say, please administratively close the case because this individual was not, in fact, a priority. That officer doesn't agree. You can go to the higher authority, the chief of the supervising officer or somebody. Exactly. If he doesn't understand what you're saying, we can go up and we try to convince the chief to see what this is wrong. This Ex shouldn't happen. Exactly. But, of course, nipping these issues in the bud, for example, if there's an issue with ICE, if we go directly to the ERO and we say to them, listen, here's what the priority enforcement memorandum says, we think this individual should not have been picked up, and uh, please let this individual go. Here of the equities, we're actually able to use this yes. memorandum as an affirmative tool to be able to get affirmative benefits for our clients. All right, let's talk about one more uh, subject that a lot of people ask, and it's like this. There are people who got the green card by lying something. They were married, they say unmarried. Whatever, but there are so many different kind of uh, issues that they dealt with wrongly, wrong information, committed maybe fraud in getting a green card or whatever. Then the guy becomes a citizen. Now he has got a wife in India and children in India. When he got married to an American woman, he got a green card, did not tell anything about the previous marriage, children, wife, anything. Then he became a citizen also, right? He became a citizen same way, told nothing about that and he divorced that American wife based upon who got a green card and they gave him a citizenship. Now he's a US citizen. His question, not his question, many people like that. The question is, if I now file the papers for a family member and if they see that I got my green card and citizenship by committing fraud, can they denaturalize me? That means taking the citizenship away. So they are afraid not to do that. We tell them that yes, the, if somebody is strict, yes, can they or do they or will they? The two different things. Can they, if you are a man of that importance, and which has been like a Nazi war criminal or a terrorist or something which is a matter of importance to them, they may. On the regular basis, general basis, we have not seen these cases where something happened in the past. What may happen, they may deny that petition or that petition you are filing for, uh, that may not give them a visa because, because she was involved, the wife also, not mention anything about it, the previous marriage, that's when right. got married, got a green card. Right. But they cannot, they can, but they don't denaturalize. Right. They, even if they send the immigration back. Uh, these exactly. Stuff, General, mean, generally, they don't. Generally, because even the consuls have sent that file back to immigration service telling them. Right. But they say, well, it happened, happened long time ago, 10 years ago. There's no point in doing that. Because if they go to the prosecutor or tell the government, He's already so busy with so many cases. Most prosecutors won't take the case. Right. And, well, what's more the troublesome... The expense in the court. Exactly. They cannot just take away like this. They have to go to the court. And it's exactly. time. And there may be 100,000, 200,000. The government has to support trying. And this is not much importance to them. They died. You guys gave them the green card. You guys did not check into that. You gave them citizenship. No, something has happened. And you file a petition. You want to take a citizenship away. So that's, right. that's I think... The, the message is that don't commit fraud. I'm not saying. Exactly. If something has happened, now you are a citizen. There may be some categories, like if a guy wants to file for a parent, he became a citizen and files for a parent. And this question may not come about a previous marriage and that may be okay. A citizen filed for parents. 
that's 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 the way it works and then these are any case of that kind you have to sit with an experienced lawyer to go through the whole history and make an evaluation and give you a right proper advice what to do or what not to do exactly i know we're running short on time but i just want to posit this one question which maybe we can address in one sure. of the future programs and that is the more troublesome issue which we often encounter are individuals who have let's say made misrepresentations and obtained they haven't yet obtained naturalization Okay, but the issue comes out when they go for their naturalization interview that they didn't tell the truth when they got their green card. Then what happens? And that's a more troublesome issue, but it's one that we probably don't have enough time to deal with today. No, but but one we more, should. One more day, what yes. happens is basically either they just deny the citizenship and close the file. In some cases, where they believe that this is hard enough, they even send it back to the immigration office to send them a notice. Of uh, NTA, NTA, yeah. So that again, mm -hmm. on a facts basis, case by case basis. With that, yeah. I think we are coming to the end of the program, Mr. Nachman. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Fawani. Thank you so much, and uh, <laughs> all of you for watching our program. Keep watching us every Saturday and Sunday at 11:45 a.m. And thanks to our uh, director of photography, Mr. Happy, with this, and goodbye. Bye for now. <laughs>